All right, welcome to another episode of Acoustic Chef. This is your boy D Will. And I'm Damn Gina. This is Cathel. And this is your girl Ebony. That was weak, D Will. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I just got through watching the video. Which video? Uh, oh, the, uh, the, I guess the 15 year old little girl that got shot in um in Ohio. Oh. Oh yeah. So they actually had a video of the actual shooting out now. It was it was out yesterday. It was out the it. day the day it happened. They okay. they released it quickly because of the um and you know everything going on with you know the environment with everything. That dude right pulled up. I'm supposed to believe that he pulled up on the scene and he was able to process. It, it was literally I counted. It's like eight to ten seconds. As soon as he pulled up. It was it was drama field. The scene was drama field. The dude pulled out his gun and shot the girl. She wasn't wielding a knife coming at him or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we don't know what the situation was. Somebody else could have had a, a weapon messing with her. He don't even he don't even know. There's no possible way he could process that that quickly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He barely even got to put the knife down. He, he shot three shots, man. That's crazy, bro. So let's back up. Let, yeah. Let's back up. This is the, the young girl. She's Damn. 15 in yeah. Columbus, Ohio. Her name is Makaya. Makaya Bryant. Makaya. Yeah, Makaya Bryant. Bryant. Um, I'm going to say what I know or what, I, what I've what i read so far. Like I read a bunch of different stuff. You have to kind of piece it together. And even still, it may not all be exactly what happened. But from what I understand, what I read, um, this young lady was being like jumped by some other girls, some yeah. some old some older girls, yeah, older yeah. women. Um, there were supposedly three or four of them uh, who came to her house. Now, um, also, I've seen a couple of different places that she was in foster care. Yeah. So her her she was she didn't live with her her mom and uh, and and dad. So there's that. So when I think about a foster child. Mm, I I think about trauma already happening in their lives, being pulled away from parents, not having, you know, people around to take care of them, folks they should be able to depend on, whatever. And then now these girls are trying to jump her and then you automatically are on like uh, in survival mode. Like I feel like a lot of foster kids are in survival mode. If this is the case, if she's a foster child. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, these kids came to her house, these girls, women came to her house to pretty much beat her up. And she calls the police from what I understand. She did. Um, and then, um, but while while waiting for the police, she decides to grab a kitchen knife to kind of protect herself. She goes outside, which maybe not the best choice, but again, she's 15, probably, you know, incredibly immature. Again, trauma from, you know, whatever happened that ended her up in foster care. And then, you know, and, and goes after these girls to kind of just like defend herself. And then a cop pulls up, he sees what might be, some mayhem and he he shoots her um even though she's the one but without even investigating without processing without assessing the situation he just starts to shoot and i'm like okay Dang. so then there's some dash yeah well one story oh there's some dash cam like pictures and videos and stuff and it looks like she's like trying to go at this girl the girl's wearing pink and i'm thinking people are like well they saved the the girl in pink and i'm like but the girl was at her house. Why was she there? She shouldn't have been at her house. So if you come to my house, you're on my lawn, you're trying to attack me. I'm going to probably, either I'm going to stay in the house and wait for the police to get there, but like, I probably won't call the police <laughs> at this point. Um, or I'm going to go out and defend myself. And you're, you're going to learn a lesson today. Don't come to my house trying to beat my ass because you might just get cut. So yeah, so, that's what I've read. So Without even like you know, processing it, that <laughs> hey, bro, if it wasn't well, that that's, that's a sound effect, that's a sound effect, you know. <laughs> that's yeah, that's my dog. Somebody's oh, at yes. my door, and so keep talking. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. So, um, without like going into that area where you went, Regina, you absolutely right. Like you, you know, all those things matter when you look at the situation in total. I'm going to try to look at the situation from the perspective of just the moment, just the moment itself, like not knowing 
you know, not thinking about the girl's back. Like, just, 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 exactly. All you pull up stuff. as you pull up as a police officer, and bam, this is what you see. Besides what you heard on the um, or as far as like being reported to you to, to make to, for you to go on that call. So Ohio is a stand your ground state. So should as a cop, you should already be prepared that you may roll up on the scene where people are fighting to supposedly defend themselves because it's a stand your ground state. So should it be, should it be unbelievable as a police officer in a state that's a stand your ground state to pull up on a scene where somebody is attacking somebody from what your viewpoint is, your viewpoint is somebody has a knife and they're running with the knife. You should be trained on how you handle that situation. I guarantee you the training is not five shots or three shots. That's not the training. It was four. Or four shots. Mm-hmm. That's not the chest. training. Exactly. In the chest. Because yeah. if you understand your ground state, you have to assume that the person may be standing their ground. You don't know what happened. You just got a call. So that right there, to me, eliminates the rationale of him pulling up, firing shots at this girl because she had a knife. And he didn't do anything to try to stop her, disarm her to, you know, like he didn't do anything. He just pulled up and start shooting. How yeah. can how can you have a law? That's in on um, the stand your ground law. But then as a police, you respond to kill somebody who's standing the ground. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the thing with the law. And that's why I go back to it needs to all be like redone, because even when in stand your ground, we stay in Texas is a stand your ground state. Right. But when you're taught um, when I went to conceal weapon um, class for my license, if someone now the law may have changed because now we have full open carry, which I don't understand because we're already that type of state anyway. But if someone was to come into um, come to harm me, I'm to wait until they are actually in my home before I start shooting, not when they're actually in my yard. But if you remember some years ago, there was um, a case here, a major case here where um, someone shot someone that was breaking into a neighbor's yard. And that was a big stand your ground landmark type of situation. So it's always these loopholes when the, the when the loopholes are convenient. and one thing is, um, you know, people always say, you know, officers are, are, I've heard different officers and different people that talk about officers say they're not really trained to disable, they're trained to kill or whatever the case may be. But I, I remember talking to someone that works in the training, well, I know for HB, HPD, um, Houston Police Department works in training. And um, she told me, she said, no, we're not um, trained to shoot to kill. We're, we're to um, try to defuse the situation. We're supposed to, like, you know, rationally, like everyone says, try to shoot in the leg, but that's not the case. So, but the law does say if someone's coming towards the cop, they can shoot. And if they're a threat to someone else, you can shoot. So the law is all over the place here. And I mean, it, I mean, and, and I'm pretty sure that those, those kids um, didn't look like kids to them. He didn't, he wasn't concerned about who called because she was the person that called. She asked for help. Um, he didn't, he wasn't concerned of trying to find out who was, the, who was the threat and who wasn't the threat. And we've seen that so many times before we've seen where people have called for robberies and it could be a black man saying somebody's breaking in my house. But when they arrive to the scene, they see the black man and the black man is in cuffs. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's with the, you know, the bias, the biases that we have in the police department. So, and, and people that you send out into the communities. There was um, last week, just here in in Houston, Texas, there was a Hispanic man where the wife called um, the cops on her husband who has mental issues. He, um, they called to get help. They always call to get help. A actual mental task force is usually sent out um, to this home. This time that's not what happened because of the resource, the limited resources in the um, police department. Mm -hmm. When the cops arrived, they shot and killed the man. Now the wife has to live with my, my husband's dad. I just needed help. He really, he had a knife and he, he was really, he was acting very erratic. I mean, everybody could say that everybody knew that, but they didn't think he was going to be shot dead. They thought somebody that was there that was trained with the situation so, that they normally have come out there was going to be there. Yes. So I, I saw both of those situations and I ain't going to lie. If I was the cop, in that situation with the, the Latino guy, I would have killed him too. Or I, I would have shot him. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I would have shot him, but I wouldn't have shot him to kill him. I mean, and there's history on that address. In that type of situation, I don't know if 
I, I don't know what shooting to kill or shooting not to kill looks like or whatever when somebody's running like the cop literally was running away from the guy trying to get away from him and he kept coming at him with a I knife. saw I saw the, I saw the video but when, when someone explains to you what the threat is when they explain what somebody's doing and how they're acting and there's history on that like if if if, if your home is cited for domestic violence um, 20 times and the police are called out, they're not going blindly to like, oh, I wonder if they're cooking apple pies over there and putting poison in it. They know what's up, you know? So yeah, you may not know the, what situation you're going to get that day, but you know what's up. And yeah. you don't, and, and, and there's common sense in this too. You don't just, if you know somebody is acting a damn fool and it's like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning and a wife is calling, she's crying, she's screaming, you're not coming, you're not coming to say, hey, let's sit down and let's pray. You know, you know that somebody is there acting the ass. You don't, you're not going to just go to the, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm saying is people are not using common sense for one. People are not being trained and people are, are finding these loopholes to get out of it. The thing is, I get it. I totally understand where you're coming from, but there's so many people that have mental, I mean, we look at what's, what's his name that was, um, I, oh, how did his name slip me? The boy that they, they said has some autistic ways, but oh, his mom said he's not yeah, autistic. One, he was like you in know? Colorado. And he was just walking and he had on a jacket because he was cold and it was yeah. raining and he, he flapping his arms. And somebody else could say, well, if I see somebody and they're flapping their arms and I'm walking, I'm thinking they're going to. I mean, it, and, and to us, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I get it. It. Oh, no, that's a different case. But to some people, that's threatening. Where does it where does the threat stop? Where do the excuses stop? Everything's going to be threatening to somebody when you don't understand the situation. I I feel yeah. what you're saying as far as that goes or whatever, but common, I mean, like you say, utilizing common sense or whatever, and I'm just utilizing my common sense. If I'm the cop and I pulled up on, on that kid, I, his name started with E. I forgot what his name Elijah. is. It was Elijah. 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 Yes. Okay. That, that was stupid for people to call the police on him. Once I got there and realized that it was a stupid situation, I'm leaving. I realized. Asked him a couple of, yes, but he didn't have a, a weapon. He, he wasn't harming anybody. He wasn't harming himself. He wasn't trying right. to harm the cop. That Mexican guy was trying to harm the cop or whatever. So I can't I can't just say that the cop was wrong in that situation or whatever. I can't say that he could have did something uh, differently. Now, maybe the, the department could have sent more people or something like that. Yeah. But we don't but we don't know. We don't know if he had a knife, if the wife called and said he had a knife or anything. We don't You're know. Right. We, you're right. You don't know, but um, and well, I'm not. I'm not really talking scene. about a one cop. I'm not talking about one cop. I'm. I'm back to the system that has to be dismantled. Yeah, they, that's what you I was have. About to, that's what so, I was about you. So, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So when we talk about the system or whatever, this is this is where I think because I went back and listened to our episode. Like, like I, I listen to all episodes or whatever. I think our idea of what the system is is different or whatever because when y'all when y'all was talking about the system. To me, it seems like I could be wrong, but it seems y'all more more so talking about the people that are implementing and imposing the system. And I'm talking more mm -hmm. about the doctrine. I'm talking about the system. I'm saying burn that shit down. Start it over. Fuck the nothing, Constitution. No, no, no. I, I know. No, but there's nothing wrong with it. Is everything wrong with it? Let me explain. Is everything not, wrong with nothing, it? It's, it's designed to it. work the way it's working. Oh, well, tell there's me what's nothing, right with it. Let me know. Okay. So the doctrine that's written is just like if you take a, a, a restaurant, we was talking about culture and stuff like that or whatever. And you take a restaurant where it got the same bylaws and laws and stuff that every restaurant has to tell the employees what they're supposed to be doing. But let's say the owner doesn't work there. He, it's just he just and this is just an investment property for him. But you got employees mm -hmm. coming in late. You got them doing stuff to people's food. You got them cussing out the customers and stuff like that or whatever that's not written in in the laws or or the the uh the, the code of conduct that you're supposed to be implementing or whatever but you have people that are doing this type of stuff or whatever so there's nothing wrong with the words the i beg to differ the i beg to yeah. differ there are so I, many um there are so <laughs> many police departments there are so many hoas there are so many loan and banks there's so many systems that are in place that have Things written into the bylaws, whether it's um, straight out like Oak Forest in Houston, Texas says no blacks could live there. Now everybody, black millionaire living there, but they still haven't revised it. OK, but or it's something as simple as instead of telling people they can't come in here, um, you can't be black. Black people can't come in. They'll say, oh, don't wear FUBU. 
You know, it doesn't matter how subtle it is. The, the, yes, the doctrine is not, re- makes, it doesn't matter the loop, the loophole. You, okay, so, so from the redlining, sense. from everything, that yeah, is the that doctrine. Makes sense, but that's not everything, though, is what I'm that, trying to say. That's it, the majority it, of no, everything God, that. Jump in. Can I jump in? Yes. So I understand from the, the logical standpoint of what you're saying, Damien. My disagreement is you're, you're absolutely correct. But my as far as my disagreement and the meaning, the, the way I look at it, you're not accurate when in your um your assumption of like my interpretation of it. But you're accurate when I don't look at it the way you're talking about. Yeah. Um, And I understand a lot of you, you're using with like if you have a doctrine and this is how all restaurants are supposed to run. But then you have, you know, certain restaurants that are doing X, Y, Z. This is why I don't see it that way is uh, the reason why I say it's, it's broken. It's, it's not a fixed system because let's look at the examples that Ebony just gave about the, um, the Hispanic father who just got shot several times. The mom has called for help and she's called the same number every time. And they send out mental health people because mm-hmm. that's a resource. Well, that resource is not available this specific time because of lack of funding. So they send out police officers, police officers come out who are not trained to handle that, which they should be. And they end up shooting and killing him. Yeah. To me, that's part of the doctrine that needs to change. If that's in the system to for cops to not be able to handle that, that's what needs to change. I am a middle school assistant principal, and I have been trained on de-escalation techniques for kids. Cops deal with de-escalation all damn day. So if they're not trained on that, that's a part of the system that's failing. So that's why when so that's why when we were talking last week, the accountability part is absolutely right. That is a staple of what needs to happen. But when you have a situation like what happened with the, the Hispanic man that got shot, that's not about accountability. But that's still part of the system that's failing us because some people are dying <laughs> and they're legitimately are not going to be charged. They're not going to be um, held accountable in the way that we think they should be. But it's because they're not. And like you said, you just you just said that if you was that guy, you would have did the same thing. You know how many other people will feel that way? Uh, how many other people will look at that situation and say that? But the cop is supposed to be the one that doesn't do it because that's his job or her job. They're supposed to be the ones that know how to show up and bring that man down. That's that's so, the problem. All right. So listen, fundamentally, we agree or whatever. I'm not saying that. I, I agree with what you're saying or whatever. There are parts of the system in, in every different thing or whatever. There's no one specific system. So if that part of the system is failing, then we need to we need to pull that up or whatever. Like like you say, the resources or Ebony said the resources weren't there at that point in time. Cool. We need to figure out how do we get more resources to get more people uh, that are more maybe better equipped for that type of situation. I'm not dismantling the system. Because we got 30 things that's working and then we got one thing that's not working or whatever. Let's I wouldn't, just, that, I wouldn't let's dismantle, a system, I wouldn't not dismantle working. a system that was that efficient either. It's not the just problem that. is I don't think the system is that efficient. Right. I think and, it's far and less it's not, efficient. And then it's not that not that efficient because of the doctrine. It's not that efficient because of the people that are implementing the well, doctrine. Well, okay, so the people die like every generation, right? <laughs> so and the people keep of being born and the people keep coming and my people keep dying i don't want like my thing is the people keep changing the people keep putting on a new face to act like they care the kumbaya we like lbgt's we like mexicans and we we like asians now we like all these people people keep yeah. changing my people keep dying it's because i don't want i don't i so i don't want no new people i don't i don't even i, I would love the people to be trained but just like i said on the last show i think i said I have a lot of stuff that's not right with me. I have a lot of um, prejudices in myself. I speak with Ebonics. Um, I might puff a little every bl- blue moon. I might drink, but when I show up to my job, I do what the fuck my job says, regardless of what I what I do, what I do at home. I need them to not show up racist, not show up biased. Some things right. are in you, right? But if they're not gonna do it, okay, I can put all the paperwork and stamp it, notarize it. I can go. We can go to the programs. We can have a community center unveiling, cut the ribbon. They show up. But at the end of the day, when they get in under pressure and they're in the neighborhoods that are un- underserved, what are they going to do? And um, yes, accountability. And I, I agreed with you last week with accountability, but I don't think that's enough because this if, if something happens to my 
child. I want the person to be held accountable. But after that, uh, the accountability, that it's already too late. My kid is dead. I want the shit to change. I, let's We can hold everybody accountable. So until everybody's in jail, until everybody's dead, like, okay, so we have, we held Chauvin accountable, I guess. So we'll see what the sentencing says. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But then that night, <laughs> that day, something else happened, you know, mm, something else right. happened today. So exactly. I, I, all I'm saying is accountability um, only goes so far. And if yeah, you, if right. you're saying the people are the problem, you got to right. then, then you have to agree that all people will never hold anybody accountable. I want to change the system. The accountability factor will get, it's, it's, it's muddy waters. It's never yeah. going to be visible to everybody. We change, yeah, we change, so we change the system by hold that's a part of the system that's broken accountability so, and diversity are two part major parts of the system that are broken i that's agree with I'm that statement about. yeah that's a part of the system that's broken so the thing is is when you look at any any system that's designed supposedly designed to um help everybody but there is historically a group of people who are you know um omitted from that group or don't don't reap the benefits of that group then you have to look at the system like that Thanks. that's how every that's how everything is is broken down you know that same argument you're using could be used against systemic racism people could say the same thing they could say it's the people it's not the system the system works it's the people and we know that that's not true we've had we've had conversations on this show that highlight what has happened historically to prove that there's a problem with the system in America, but the what is police... the system? Well, when is we talk about the system, doctrine, or is the system the people? For or me, the system. For me, both? for me, the system is all of it, because the people are part of the system. Right. They're the right. ones that's supposed to make the system work. But if a system is flawed, it works the way it's supposed to, and that's what Ebony is saying. The system right. is designed to work the way it's supposed to. When you have when you have um, when you have so many commonalities with a system that's implemented across the country, you have police stations who supposedly do things different. Right. But they all seem to be on the same path when it comes to how they handle minorities. That is a system problem. That that yep. like you, 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 you um, even the, if the people are, are, are acting the same way across the, the country when it comes to these issues, that's a system problem. That's how I interpret it. And that has to change. So if what they're doing is actually part of their doctrine, what's on paper, then it's that's, working the way it's but, supposed to. But see, that's what but I'm it's saying. a problem. It needs to change because it's not it's not incorporating all people that need to benefit from but, that. So so if we all know, we all agree that the words say liberty and justice for all. It doesn't say liberty and justice for whites. Or liberty and justice for black. When it said men. it, you wasn't even can a man. I, you were not considered. I just want to finish yeah. if I can. I understand what you're saying. I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, we know what the words say. The words are. There's nothing wrong with the words. The there's words are not the system. I'm not talking about words. Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I, I just said. That's why I said earlier we may be looking at this from a different perspective, a different yeah. standpoint. Because to me, the system is not necessarily the people that make it up is is the doctrine that's written we can change the people we can replace the people with better people that's the problem we haven't been doing that or whatnot you know what i'm saying Absolutely. we've been fighting about the dog like i said before we fighting about the dog that's biting us when the master is training them how to bite us or whatever you know what i'm saying i think we should take we can take a better stance oh we may be headed in the, in the direction with the chauvin situation and we when we're talking about justice George Floyd got justice. Black people didn't necessarily get justice. He didn't get justice. justice. He did. did. He got he, well, somebody was accountable. I mean, he got. I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, to me, that's that's justice or whatever. We, we're not going to stop. If I go murder somebody, I should go to prison for that murder. If I just did it maliciously, that and that person would get justice. I shouldn't have done that. But that's that's what justice is. We can't. That's well. I, that's society, not justice to society, me. But, I but how is it not justice? Like you can't stop. It's just somebody. not to me. You can't stop. Somebody if somebody kills from... my child, there's no justice for me. There's no justice. I do want him in jail, can't... but there's no justice. How can you? You can't stop the person from doing it before they do it. You're I right. That's that... why I, you can never get justice until it doesn't happen to anybody else again. Mm. 
I yeah, think that a it's lot not me. just the yeah, go ahead. it's go not ahead. just the uh the doctrine, it's not just the people. Um, there's also like a bunch of unwritten uh there's a code that these police officers follow as well. Because if if I'm a cop, we all cops, and you do something wrong. I'm not supposed to tell on you. I'm not supposed to uh, come against you. I'm not supposed to stop you. I'm not supposed to be like, hey, get off of him. There were other right. cops around that could have said, hey, man, what you doing? Get off of him and pulled him off. But instead, they they stick to they stick together. It's a code. So that's that might Talking not be George anywhere. Floyd. Yeah. For that, yes, for George Floyd, that might not be written anywhere. It might not be part of their doctrine. But there's there yeah. are unwritten rules all over the place there's always some kind of code and it keeps everybody safe for anytime you do come against it there was an officer recently who who yeah, uh, yeah. Something. Got, well, yeah. it was a she female yeah. and yeah no, she, she like got, lo- she lost her fired. job i think for, well, she, for yeah well something. yeah she got fired yeah. but she just got i guess some some, some form she of got compensated for and her job back but yeah, that was in light of all this that's happening now. Exactly. Right. Because the whole thing was why didn't the other cops say anything? Then they're they're culpable for this this crime or this murder as well. Uh, so now because you didn't say anything oh, because of this code you guys have that now all of a sudden you're you're in trouble, too. Oh, but I was it's the code. Well, a man is dead now. So mm-hmm. fuck the code. If you want your livelihood. And the other the other thing that I wanted to say is that. The problem with this is that say he only gets like 10 years, he gets out of jail, he might move away. Maybe people forget who he is. I, I doubt it, but maybe he goes to some little backwoods country town. I don't know, maybe Viter. And they're like, hey, come on down here. We'll hire you. You can be on our police force. We hate niggers down here. And then now he's got a job again. He has his life back. This man is, is dead. He, he was cut off. Yeah. I want him to be cut off yeah. too. Like it's not for real. Like yeah. honestly, I'm like, if it was my son, my brother, my husband, my child, my cousin, I ain't no justice until you're dead too. Like it's it, not yeah. for yeah, every, yeah, everybody so let me put got my foot on my my knee on your neck. neck yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like that. George Zimmerman living, you know, having <laughs> book releases and signing Skittles and teas, you know? Exactly. So I don't want you to have a good life because my his life is cut off. It's gone. So I want you to go to jail. And when you get out, I don't want you to ever be able to work in law enforcement again. I want them to strip you of it. I want you to be right. added to a database like a sex offender. So wherever you go, you got to register and you can't get no job as a cop as any type of law enforcement go work at um 7-eleven or something and go go uh be a dog walker but but never ever do you and you can't carry a gun either you can't get no concealed handgun license because you don't know what to do with it because you you get off your knees too because you use those as deadly weapons as well like i want him to suffer and if he's not jail is too good for him in my opinion you're not suffering if they would let him out (laughs) if they Um... if 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 he gets out because no i mean with people in jail (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't think he's going to, if they put him in general population, only from what I've heard about jail, I'm, I got brothers and they, they've they all been multiple times and when they, not all of them, but some of them, and they come back and they're like, man, you know, these are the people that we, that we don't tolerate. We don't like child molesters. We come, we go after rapists and dirt and dirty cops. We, we hate all of them. So if they get if they come in general population, the first thing they get is a beat down. And I'm like, dang. So this dude, if, if they put him in general population, I would be surprised if he live. I'm just I mean, I'm OK well, I with that if he doesn't. I'm OK if he doesn't like and I want him to suffer. But I don't, and I but, know that's like hard hearted, but I'm sick of this. We all should be sick of it. Black, white, Hispanic, blue, red, green. All of us should be tired of it. We should be sick of hearing stories like that. Even the racists are like, oh, God, another one. I'm sick of hearing about this. Well, shit, do something about it. Stop. Stop your racist behavior and you don't have to hear shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean. I don't know. I don't want him to go to general population. They may end up killing him. I, I want him to, to spend shit at least 30 to 40 years. I want him to die in prison or whatever. I, I, I don't, don't want him in solitary. Him within an inch of his life and then no, that's, you live y'all don't understand and then beat him how, again and then you live and then beat him again and then you live. I want you to like, see Satan's door and then they bring you back 
so you can get another beat down. Prison, that's how, prison that's is how not, harshly I feel. Prison is not fun. Or what, there's nothing fun about being in jail or whatever. I don't think you're we think alive. it's fun. <laughs> you're still breathing. There's you're no, still alive. You know, you're still are breathing. You? Are you? Who said you're prison was fun? But I'm saying, y'all saying it like we want to do even more than, than prison. I mean, I what? do. I want him to suffer. This man no. called yeah. out for his mother. I can't breathe. Is prison breathe. not suffering? Not it's enough a, for me. It's a form of suffering. <laughs> yeah, but he, when she's, want, when she's saying she wants uh, she wants him a general population where they'll go after the dirty. And they're going to kill him. I don't want him to die. They I don't if want he him to, to die general, yet. No, he's going to die if he go to general. I don't want him to die. I want him to so suffer. Be it. I want him to think about this. For, for, but that's giving him the easy way out. That's the reason why people commit suicide. No, I want I him mean, to suffer for the rest of his life. Yeah, no, I mean, I, life. I, 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 I want him to like suffer, easy. but I don't want him to suffer like just being in prison and having to be there and be you like. Think I, what, he gonna be walking around to eating to, uh, Twinkies? No, that's <laughs> not. That's not what I'm saying. I don't saying. want him to be in the room that's, by himself. That's <laughs> suffering. That's suffering for him. But I want him to suffer. Like I want somebody to kidnap him, like break him out of prison, and then tie him in a basement, and then like. And then yeah. you know, like, then, uh, hold on, and then torture this dude, and then give him blood transfusions to make sure he live, and then keep torturing him, cut off some limbs. I'm, I'm telling you, like, they what they be doing on, on Silence of the Lambs in movies. <laughs> that's how I want him to suffer. That's how I want him to suffer. But, but I want him evil. to to be just sitting there all day in pain and and getting done dirty like that and be like but you know what you're not finna die hold on let me give you this and then right there negative. right when you take yeah. your last breath like <laughs> let me give you this yes, so you can let me give you some food you took. let me give you some oatmeal so you can Don't live some and we're gonna do this again tomorrow like groundhog day yeah. let me ask y'all this how was how was 2020 for y'all staying in the house amazing being able, being able to go outside you, or that, hey bro that's you know not that's not a question to ask somebody like me because I didn't change my lifestyle much. Hey, bro, that's a lie because you told you I spoke said to much. Us, you spoke to I us said about much. how being even when we went through the ice storm, you was by yourself or whatever. Hey, bro, that was, was 2021. Crazy. That was amazing for me. I just didn't <laughs> like that crazy. other people were that dying. Was, that was 2021. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing, fun, <laughs> ain't nothing fun about prison or whatever. But everything that you said, Gina, is to me is, is about a, accountability or whatever. Just like um with the uh the uh, Trayvon Martin situation or whatnot, I would I want to hold the prosecution responsible or whatever and accountable because I feel like they botched that case on purpose or whatnot. You should not be a prosecutor if you're going after first degree murder when you don't have any statute or criteria for first degree murder or whatever. I think you could have easily got second, third degree murder on that situation or whatever. But what they went at, I think just like even with this judge in the Chauvin case, I feel like he kind of gave him gave him an out with not sequestering the witnesses or whatnot. Those witnesses should have been in a room in a hotel somewhere mm -hmm. where Man, they the could jury? just lie and say that they hadn't watched TV and stuff like that or whatever. The jury, the jury. The jury. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree with that. And you know, like, yeah, because yeah. now they're they're going with these comments that Nancy Pelosi has said and. Um, and yeah, Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. Yeah. But did y'all, did, um, with the case with the, the 15 year old, the 16 year old that we were talking about, um, someone told me that, um, after the shooting, um, when the crowd started to gather and, um, were very upset that that officer that shot the gun screamed out, um, Blue Lives Matter. Is, yeah. yeah. I don't heard something like this. I don't know if there's any record video of it, but it is reported that he said mm -hmm. that. I heard yeah. that too. But I didn't, I mean, yeah. I just want it on record. I mean, the, you know, like like I said, and we said this, and I'm not going to keep giving disclaimers. I don't think anybody on this show doesn't believe anybody's life doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, like, I mean, you blue lives matter, folks. It's like at, you, when your uniform is off, who, what are you? What life are you? It ain't a blue light, you know? So at the end of the day, well, I can't take my skin off, my skin color off. I can't pass for anything other, but exactly. it is what it is. Exactly. And the response and the, to say that has no bearing on the situation you find yourself in. Like you were never in danger. You yeah. were never in danger. Yeah. You know, as as a like it, it does you to, to make the statement, period, is just, just shut the fuck up. You shouldn't, you know, yeah. that's we all know why they say it. But yeah. even but if you was actually like fighting for your life and you killed somebody and then somebody was like getting at you, you can say, well, blue lives matter. And I'll be like, well, hell, he was about to die. You know, at least he, you know, I mean, at least he's talking about saving himself. <laughs> he had he was not in danger. He was not being threatened. It had nothing to do with his life. Bruh, that's it's like 
it's like arguing with an endangered species and you're like, please stop killing us gray wolves or whatever. And, and you like, well, some of us died too or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, these people, they idiots or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's why, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like accountability is, we haven't seen enough of that. And not just at the lower level, at the highest level. I want to see accountability. I want to see more people go to prison. I want to see more people lose their jobs. You know what I'm saying? With with no, because yeah. a, a lot of these politicians are groomed to be politicians. Exactly. They're not just you. That's a job that I want to do. They parents are Mr. Kraft want to marry Mrs. Uh, Hines, uh, want to get their kids together and shit like that or whatever. So they, <laughs> most, you know, they groom them to be in these positions. They go to these private schools and all of this. They don't. They don't live in the same lives that we. They don't walk in our same shoes. They don't live on the same streets that we live on. They don't live in the same community. So how how are they police, politicians, presidents? How can they be? They're supposed to be not leaders. That's what we've all been trained to think. They are not leaders. They're supposed to be representatives. That's what they're supposed to be. But that's that is not what they are. They have become leaders. We listen to them for uh what what laws and stuff like that we supposed social issues and bro they who who the who the hell are they they went to private school they don't know anything about these social issues that we going through you know what i'm saying they don't know about dealing with with poor people and middle class people and people with uh with uh with small business owners and stuff like that they've been dealing with trump their whole life yep they've been going to galas they never been to a party so I, I, I agree with that. And I think that a lot of times when you do put people in places like where you've seen some people be like um, arms buzzmen in, in some sort of way or, um, you know, um, leaders in within the cities where they um, are like boots on the ground type people. Um, I think it's when I watch people that you're like, oh, this person be good once they get to this level. I hope that you go and be the mayor, you be the governor, you yeah. go and represent the state. And there are some people individually that I'll say they've done the work, you know, they've done some great things. But then when you may look um, from a wide lens and say they haven't done enough, why haven't they done this and why haven't they done this? Yeah. And then you then they'll if you ever hear some of them say, well, I brought this to the board. Now, I, I do understand there are people that vote. But mm -hmm. OK, so I had to be, because the way the filibuster works, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have yeah. to give this. I may not agree with this part of, of the plan, but I have to put this in just so that this can pass the next next um, vote. And that's where I'm saying um, the system, because I've I seen some that. great people get in the positions yeah. we wanted them to get in and then they couldn't do anything yeah, yeah. because right the systems that. in place keep some keep them and that the right the, the rules and it may not say. We're going to redistrict re this neighborhood, but it seems like as soon as some people move out the beltway or they move here, redistricting yeah. starts happening and certain laws and some certain rules take place. Um, they can be minor as, you know, if you're in the city limits, you ride a bike with a helmet, you're out, you don't. Okay, well, which areas are you trying to kill and what are not, who's safe? Who wears the seatbelts? It may be little things like that, but if you think of the laws and the rules on the, on, in the big scheme, it's it's all um, structural and systematic. And those are the things that even if we got all the great people in place, if those yeah. great people say, I follow the law because I believe in the law, I believe justice works. But then at the end of the day, they say, damn, it didn't prevail because uh, this law told me I couldn't do this and I had to do it this way. I just right. think everything needs to be rewritten because we're in a new world, a new way of thinking. Uh, we right. do everything is different. The way we work, the way we learn, just like how the school system, I mean, we said this before, why the school system is structured the way it is for manufacturing workers, but we're, we're teaching people to be, well, we don't teach them to be entrepreneurs. We want them to be doctors. We want them to be innovative and think out of the box, but then we put them in boxes to learn and learn in a certain strategy, strategic manner that was implemented for manufacturing workers. So, I'm just saying the whole system is not here for elderly, veterans, Blacks, Asians, kids, anybody, but those that are benefiting and we know who are benefiting. So yeah, it seems the most like, difficult, like the, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you just blanket everything with the constitution or whatever, 
I don't see anything wrong with it. But then, like you saying, when you get more intricate into the details, it's like the devil is in the details or whatever, and they create more structure to what's only, this is nothing but a, a an experiment. Civilization is an experiment. There's no right. perfect civilization. There's no perfect way to be or perfect way not to be. There's no utopia or whatever, because you got so many different people and stuff like that or whatever. There's no way you could please everybody, but a lot of the stuff you're talking about, you're absolutely right or whatever. Like we in America, we speak English. Why do we have Latin words in the court system? How come I can't represent myself for so, so small, such small cases and stuff like that or whatever. Why are you trying to confuse me with words like habeas corpus and non compus mentis and all that type <laughs> of bullshit? I shouldn't have to learn that in order to protect myself or whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, right. It's it's like I mean, you write about the Constitution, the the on face value, just reading what it says. You're like, okay, this sounds like this is just or whatever, but. The Constitution, while it would probably never be changed or not in our lifetime anyways, um, that would speak volumes if they changed it, because for a lot of people, the Constitution Constitution is a symbol of, you know, like that. That's not for me. It was never for me. Yeah, a symbol of oppression. So many times symbols, um, you know, things that that like originally or supposedly had, you know, good purpose. Once they're tainted, it doesn't matter that what's written down makes sense this yeah. is how i view it so if the united states of america did say you know what we're going to rewrite the constitution to where it encompasses all people that will be powerful it would it would be it would be really powerful but something like that is like i say it, it ain't happening no time <laughs> soon it probably won't yeah. happen in our lifetime if it ever happens but you know this this again back to the system you know the laws they've made it that process the most difficult thing to change when that is the simplest thing you could do to make change <laughs> but it's the most difficult thing to change and they do things like and i can't remember the term but uh, it, it's a process that they, they were talking about with joe biden well <laughs> um he was saying we need to bring this process back i can't remember the name of the term so y'all might know what i'm talking about when i describe it but it's like when they're trying to like like pass a bill or or a, a bill is going to be approved and they have like this little form or whatever when they're like you know discussing it and um, but they try to do, you know, both sides of Democrats or Republicans. They it's this process to where they um like they when they have the floor to speak, uh-huh. they can speak as long as they want to. And they try to do that to to like to get people to like leave, to not yeah. place their votes. And this happened, you know, years ago where a politician, I think it was Huey P. Long, read the phone book. He read the phone book from front to cover and he couldn't leave because if like if he went to go to the restroom or something like that, he was done. So he read it from front to cover because they didn't want to pass this bill. They didn't want it to go through. And that's not the only time, but they still have that in effect right now. Those are the types of yeah. things that won't allow laws that filibuster, that's it, um, to be changed. Yeah. And so like we as a country accept it though. Nobody is, nobody is, Nobody's fighting to get something like that. That's so silly and ridiculous. Like just listening to that, you're like, oh, whatever. That didn't happen. You, it, it don't, it's it so don't make childish. sense. It don't make sense. Right, make but sense. that is a process in our legal system. And you know right. that it's designed for one thing and one thing only. <laughs> you know, so that that just highlights, you know, like 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 I said, you know, the 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 laws they've made it very difficult to change. Any law is difficult to change. But it's the easiest thing that you can do to affect change. Mm-hmm. And that's not on accident. That's on yeah. purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And um, similar, Damon, you're right about like the, the verbiage and everything. Because I and I read um, one time when I read the Biden crime bill that everybody was complaining about. I was like, dang, if I was to implement what I think should happen, it would be written just like this. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. But it's what how everybody was able to get contracts and put uh-huh. in loopholes and, you know, put things around what wasn't put in there. And that was to our detriment. So right. that's it. You're right. The words, even though I have some issues with some things with the founding fathers and the things they wrote, uh-huh. but the words may not be the problem, but it is basically what the not just the intention well yeah it is the intent but it's like okay now what what 
can somebody else come in? Because I don't even know. I don't know what Biden planned, but he did he plan for the um, prisons to profit like they did? You know, oh, no. he didn't put in there. He didn't put anything and say, don't do that. But he put everything that we said we would do. But we're mad at Biden. We would have wrote it that way. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure we would have written it that way once I read it. So, so this is my thing. That being said, if we had, that's my the second part of my thesis. If we had more diversity, <laughs> if we had more people, you know what I'm saying? More black people, more Mexicans, more Guatemalans, more Chinese, all of these different people or whatever. When they try to pull this this bullshit, because the like you say, the words, there's nothing really wrong with the words. It's the people that are in place that are implementing this and u- utilizing it to their advantage. If we didn't have those people in power, if it was more across the board, you know, different people from different places, then we may not have the same outcome. Would the, or or would they would we have this diversity and they would all just conform to the status quo and we and then we problem. go back to accountability. We gotta so have checks the, and balances. If, I mean, if somebody is bullshit, we gotta get them true. out of there. We gotta get them out of there. Uh, uh, that's not how it's done. I'm just saying that's how it should be. Yeah, well, it should be. Yeah, but I don't. I just. I guess where it is is I've lost lost faith in it. Right. I don't even know if I've ever had that. faith. But <laughs> so it's like I hear you, and like I'm not combating everything you say, but it's like with the account. Uh, kind of, accountability factor it's like it's almost like who polices the police okay we have it now we want to say good apple stand up so you know because of everything that's going on we're gonna have some real good apple stand up real like all of a sudden like they're gonna do some things but then when things die down like when it's not you know heroic anymore and we go back to our regularly scheduled program when you've had Uh enough blue moons and daiquiris with this this person on your force and then you find out that they're a bad apple are you going to break the code, the bro code? You know, what are you going to do there? It's just like, um, where are, I don't, I don't even see any of my um, QAnon people. Where, where did they go? It's like everybody's going down, back in. The, it's just like, it, it's every, everybody's out and boisterous and loud yeah. while it, when it's popular and when, you know, you're getting the whatever accolades, but then until you're not, it's like, you're, you're still there. We're still amongst these people. We just don't know where they at or who they are unless we know, you know. Yeah. Did y'all see that uh this dude uh DeSantis signed this anti riot law in Florida? I did hear about that. I did, but I didn't get into it. It was overshadowed by so much. It's well, he, he had been talking about he'd been talking about this since like I wanna say last year or whatever. Mm-hmm. I never got around to to discussing it or whatever but so basically he set laws in place to if like if you're looting or something like that if they deem that you're looting then you're going to get it's going to be deemed a felony you can't block roadways or none of that type of stuff you're going can you be be shot for having grocery bags in your hand and they think you're looting yeah absolutely you're going to be excused if you end if you run somebody over so one of these racist people run somebody over or whatever that are congregating they're going to be excused if it's deemed that you're rioting or whatever see that see something like that put in the law is ridiculous because that shouldn't even be a part of it like even if you believe that this law is just as far as you know how when how um um protesting you know where you block streets and stuff like that even if you believe that you know what that's very inconvenient for people who don't have anything to do with this and they're just trying to live their life and not worry about it and they trying to go to work and all that blah blah even if you believe that you should give somebody the green light to run a motherfucker over hey let's just all go to clan rallies and run those people over you got damn right because it all is all relevant Indeed. You know, I mean, I, it looked like a riot to me, so I just ran them over. That's ridiculous. I don't know. Absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, it's, sometimes you have to make the law work in it's, your favor. It's already being challenged or whatnot, um, by the attorney general in Florida or whatever, um, because they don't even agree with this, uh, this foolishness, man. This is crazy. Like something like that shouldn't even make it past his desk. Like something like he that. He wrote like, this. It's, I know he wrote it. I'm saying he wrote it, but something like that should make it past his desk. Like when he like give it to the person to say, okay, I'm introducing this bill. They look at it and be like, now nah, you joking, right? Just go ahead. Just this stop this, stop this, playing. This but, this but stupid. Listen, <laughs> DeSantis is in Florida. I know, man. I where know. where was 
where's the uprising in Florida? Where, like, huh? Like, where's <laughs> where's this coming from? You know what I'm saying? This is just coming out the blues. This is coming. This is this is baseless or whatnot. You, I could see if this was Minneapolis or you know what I'm saying or a, a, a shitty place like St. Louis or whatever. Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> We no, got I'm, issues, I'm <laughs> but come on now. <laughs> no, I was just seeing if you were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nah, it is crazy though, man. It's I mean, it's just it's also draining and stressful. It is. It's very it's stressful. Very, it's very, it's very stressful. draining. And yesterday was one of the it seemed like such a long day with, with so many things going on, hearing the verdict and then being like, wow, finally something is, is moving. Um, it looks like in the right direction. And then hearing about another uh, young black person being shot down by the police. And then like, ah, damn, it's like a balloon was inflated and then somebody stuck a pin in it and, and it burst. So um, I immediately went into that mode where I'm like, let me check on my kids. Let me talk to my boys, my older ones, my, my older son, my 17 year old son and my, who's going to be 18 in, in about a month. And then my 17 year old nephew. And did you hear what happened? You hear what's going on and how do you conduct yourself? And like constantly reiterating that this is how we live. This is how we have to live in order to stay alive. And even sometimes when you live the, the way that they think you should, you still might end up dead. So, you know, mind your manners and watch your step and <laughs> don't look too intimidating and, um, you know, comb your hair and don't wear a hoodie. And, you know, I just, and smile and, and, and be happy, go lucky like Ted, or else maybe you'll end up <laughs> like Trayvon. So, uh, it is all so, so exhausting. And, um, that's why I think everybody needs to be in therapy. Oh, definitely. I just feel like on top of my reparations that I keep saying <laughs> I need to get and <laughs> I, we we need PTSD payments, you know, I just and I'm not trying to have my hand out, but I just I'm just like, how much longer y'all going to continue to and I don't even want to use the word, but F us. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. it's just like, you know, people are I, I look at the, the the little girl, the nine year old that and she was on Good Morning America this um, this morning that had to be on the stand for George Floyd. You know, these people just going to the store to get some snacks, some juice, whatever. Popping you know, the... Huh? I say it was popping out there, too. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, and then the 16, 16-year-old 16 <laughs> that was brave enough to keep recording, and then after, after this, after George Floyd died, all of us, not us, but all of us that came for her, like, you should have did something. Put that camera down. You should have been doing something. And, like, I heard... Yeah, I heard George, one of George Floyd's sisters say yesterday, you know, I, we all wish we could have been with my brother, but if, I just know one thing, if we all would have been with him, there just would have been more dead folks, you know? And that's just the reality of it. And I mean, especially a kid, you know, but, the, just, but just think about the boldness of a 16 year old and there's four cops and to yeah. stand there and not turn your phone off, not even put it to the side, to pretend like you're not recording, mm -hmm. like you know, that's a that's a hero. I don't I don't expect nobody to intervene in a manner of to fight for me that somebody that don't know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause if if, if it was my son, of course, then I guess we we both about to get knees on our necks or whatever. But I'm not expecting somebody. I'm glad those people recorded, but I don't. I didn't necessarily need them to intervene. One of the dudes was like an MMA fighter and everything or whatever. Yeah. So he he understood just visualizing. He like dudes, you about to kill him or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a, a choke move or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. He didn't need to intervene. That that's not his people. He did what he was supposed to do or whatever. He witnessed it. He he tried to stop him. But just like the prosecution said, which did a hell of a job, I thought, or whatever, um, the dude was his ego. It, it was yeah. all about his ego and his pride or what. Nobody was going to tell him what to do. Nobody was going to tell him to stop. Even yeah. even one of the officers did. It was either officer or EMT that came to him and was like, hey, you want to roll him over on his side? He was like, nah, we good. This bastard was picking rocks out of tires while he was kneeling on this man's neck, man, and playing like under the fender and, and stuff like that. Like he just, his indifference and, and, and apathy was just outstanding or whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was, it was amazing. Like he killing this dude while he playing with the damn tire. Yeah. 
you know, there's one thing that I think, and I, I need to talk about it with my children. You know, we talk about the George Floyd. We talk about Ch Chauvin, right? We talk about him and the ugliness within, but then there's so much telling just in the the other officers, right? And I, I go back and I, I kind of, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be held accountable at all because you yeah. chose to be a police officer. I also um, think that just being a good person, you need to not be a follower when it comes to things that are just right. But it's like, and I think about the individual cases of it. I think about like the one cop, what was it like his first, first day or he had been there like three days, you know? And then the it's like, guy. there's so many diff different situations and it's like, it's so unfortunate for them. Now this is like, they lost their jobs. This is something that is, they're going to have to deal with the rest of their life that they didn't yeah. even, they didn't speak up. Now, even if they, maybe, maybe I haven't heard, maybe somebody says stop, but you knew you could have did, did more, whether it was call some extra reinforcement, who knows? But it's really telling, just like even with our children and other people, just be good people because that one person, he he's he's gone down, you know, but you're allowing him to bring you all with them. And somebody died because you didn't have the courage to um, do anything different and you had the badge on. So I mean, I don't I don't have no sympathy because the bystanders had enough courage. Yeah. The bystanders had enough courage to look at this and say, like, hey, something wrong is going on here. You know what I'm saying? You a cop. You went through the training and all of this type of stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? You you know that this is wrong or whatever. This ain't like you just got a job at Walmart and you find out that cats is taking PlayStation 5s home and stuff like that or whatever. I mean, the most going to happen, you may lose your job. You may get a stolen goods uh yeah. fine or something like that or whatever this you just they just took this man life right in front of you and i say they because even though he was on his neck the other people at least two other cops were restricting his breathing they were. by laying yeah. on his back or his chest or whatever yeah. you know what i'm saying so i i don't i don't have i mean no i don't i don't want to say i have sympathy because i don't feel like that's the right word maybe just understanding why they didn't do it i I, I don't agree with why they didn't do it. And I would like to believe that if I was a police officer, I wouldn't have done it. But do I understand <laughs> why they didn't like just become ultra aggressive and stop this man? Yeah, I do understand. It goes back to what we were talking about with this culture. The culture like, yeah. you know, they, they, they're, I'm pretty sure they're very well that they could lose their job if they do that. They've seen it happen. I'm sure we, we just talked about the, um, the lady that was awarded, you know, her lawsuit and given her job back. I we all know that she's not the only one that probably got fired for stepping in and doing something like that. Like at the end of the day, people are thinking about their livelihoods. Like all these people, all our all the minorities have been shot by cops. Those cops know it, and those cops go see those people that commit those crimes. These police officers commit those crimes, go back to work, and still have a job every day. They didn't think this was going to be no different. Exactly. This was this was this was hey, this is just another day for them. Business as usual. So I completely understand why they didn't say anything in in in, in the back of their minds. Maybe they were sitting there like this is so messed up. Maybe they was. I don't know. But I understand why that would be enough for them to say something. I'd have to find a new livelihood. I'd have to say, look, because the the human in me would say, what do you get off of? I don't even care if he wasn't black, if he was uh, white, Puerto Rican, whoever. Get off of this man's neck. Our job is not to kill him. We are not the judge, the executioner, the jury. Yeah. Let's arrest him if that's what we need to do. Take him to jail and let him have his due process. Why are you, what are you doing? And then if I got fired, then I guess I need to find another job and go do something else because I'm not cut out for killing people. It's not how my do you, thing. How do you say blue lives matter and pretend that there's this badge of honor and you stand for the badge and what it means and the constitution and all this shit. But at the same time, you, you going directly like the, doing the polar opposite of what it means. Like that doesn't make sense. So it's, it's basically only when it's circumstantially, you know, good to say those things when it, when it makes sense to you or whatever. Uh, I don't know, man, that's crazy. I don't know. I have a few friends who are, who are cops and, and they're black men and they have they like treated just like this <laughs> well no they have polar opposite they do i'll say that but they like have polar opposite viewpoints Views, on yeah. on certain things yeah like um there's a video posted and both of them commented on it 
And one of them was like, well, if the guy had just told the officer his name and answered the question and wasn't so disrespectful, you know, they wouldn't have done that. And then the other one was like, well, why did he even approach him anyway? He didn't have any reason to be yeah. bothering him. Why was he bothering him? I, I don't just go looking for trouble. There's nothing in the rule about trouble. disrespect and, and, and non -respect. Exactly. <laughs> so they, they had both cops, both black men grew up in the same area, whatever. We went to the same high school, graduated in the same uh, year but they had polar opposite viewpoints. And so and that makes me wonder like, okay, who you been hanging around that makes you think that, you know, like going around and doing this is okay to, to your own people. So I, I don't, I don't know, I guess. It's yeah. I was messing over. with this cop wife and he ain't even get that upset or whatever, just a little what mad. Hell? What? Shut up. Like I respect the that guy. <laughs> <laughs> The last thing I want to say before we close up is I know we've been talking about the system, whether it work, it don't work or whether, whether it's the doctrine is right and all that. All I will say is this. We struggle to find videos of white people who make up 60 percent of this country that are treated the same way. That's a fact. That's all. I'm, I mean, we, we struggle to find all they, they make up. The majority of this country, you would think that if things were equal with everybody and everything was done equally, we would have more videos involving white people. But yet we struggle to find videos like, <laughs> involving even poor white people. We struggle to find videos of them being treated the same way. That's that's why we need that's why we need diversity, bro. I don't I don't want more training for them because you know what? That's that's another thing that came out of this. That dude, Chauvin, he's been in the uh, service for like, what, 20 some years? He's going, they go through a lot of training, a lot more training than we think or whatever, like watching videos and all of that type of stuff or whatever. But that's, that's not enough. That's not, that's not the answer. I, I agree. That's not enough. But I think when people say more, well, when I say more training, it's basically uh, what it's I said last training. time. It's more, you need more certifications. You need to but, go through but, courses. But how do you... so, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a reactive thing. It should yeah. be once you start day one. Right. You should have been trained on de-escalation strategies. You should have gone through how you do that. You should like this is a part of your job. You don't just watch these videos and say, hey, when this happens, you do this. No, just like, OK, let's let's pretend for a second. We've never been through police academy, so none of us know how it is. Like, but let's pretend for a second like it is on TV uh -huh. where they show them doing all the training and going through all the drills and stuff like that. And they're actually teaching them. They're, they're teaching them how to how to um, target practice. They're going through physical drills and training. There's nothing different when you go through learning how to de-escalate people. Like I said, when I say I've been trained on de-escalation strategies, it is not a sit and get. You are right. with people. You are learning how to physically um, restrain people. You are learning how to talk them down by role playing. And because I have to use it, I know how to use it in my daily life. I just used it last week with a student who completely tore up a classroom and I came in and I talked her down and had her sit down and we were able to get um, a conversation going and then removed her from her classroom. Got the video. Shut up. <laughs> my point though, you, there's is so when we use the word training, we all have a different idea of it. Like some people training for them may be, watching videos because that's what their job do but in education training is not sitting down watching no video a lot of times i agree it is it. actually straight up like learning how to do something by having to model it regina was in the training today and i'm pretty sure she was sitting there like i wish i was doing something else but y'all were hands-on right y'all didn't yeah, just but, they didn't just tell y'all what to do y'all were hands-on practicing what you learned that's how key, it needs to be you're right and another key element though is you're a humanitarian or whatever I don't know where they're getting these people from, bro. You know what I'm saying? They they finding them yeah. in the woods with the hood on and telling them, <laughs> come on and get a job. You know what I'm saying? I, I heard that there was a shortage of, of, of qualified people who wanted to be cops. Like there's a shortage of qualified teachers because people yeah. are sick of it and they just don't, they don't want to do it anymore. So they have a hard time right. finding people. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what it is, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know what the ultimate answer is. Other than, everything. What, other than what we've talked about, dismantling, rebranding, re, re put it back together again, tear it down, more um, all of um, training, diversity. All, yeah, all of that. All them, all the millions of dollars that the police stations get every year that's part of this money that we use to pay millions for lawsuits and stuff. What if you put that into salaries and you had police officers making one hundred and fifty to $200,000 a year? I guarantee you, you had some people signing up for that shit. 
Well, hey. and they would be they needed to be fully vetted. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not saying uh, yeah, that, more that, time that, that would be part of it. any job, any job that unless you are an entrepreneur, any job that's paying you that money, you have to be certified out the ass. Mm-hmm. So certified. if you paying that much money, you're certified. going to be certified to do the job the way that it's supposed to be done. Do you know that some of them make that type of money because they get fake overtime. Fake yeah. overtime. I've heard yeah, that I know what too. you're talking about. I've heard yeah. that too. But you're right. But I'm talking about like the advertiser for the job, ain't that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I got it. You I got know what I'm saying? Down. Yeah, we all do. You ain't no more important than us. What you talking about? I, I never said <laughs> that. <laughs> all right. Well. well, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Acoustic Chef. Go out there, do your part, be moral. You know, help somebody, you know, just be good people and call out those that are not. Don't idly sit by. Be a part of change. Be the catalyst. So please like, subscribe, tell people about us. Tell us what you want to talk about and challenge our our ideas. You know, let us know what you think. If you don't think um, the system should be changed, tell us what's good with it. So we want to hear from you. Yeah, Absolutely. I want to definitely hear that. Absolutely. And if you want to brighten your day, go look at this uh, video of this Bobcat attacks this man's wife. It'll definitely brighten your day for a few moments. What? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to put it in the um in the um, comments Facebook. so they can click it and, and go oh, to it. Oh, yeah, there. <laughs> Until next time, folks. All right. Later. Later.